Hi everybody, it's Patricia. I'm here to wish you a Merry Christmas. And actually, I just want to take a moment to remind you of a few things, say thank you for a few things, and give you a little taste of what is coming up in 2022. So here we are at the end of the year. And for me, there's so many reminders around, like I'm driving and I hear that song on the radio, so this is Christmas, and what have you done? And you might feel like that. You might feel like, what have we done? What have I done? You know, what's really been done? There is an undercurrent that is flowing through that is making sure that real change can take place, that real dreams can come true. And I know that sounds like a lot like Santa Claus, and I got a little story about Santa. Um, when I was a kid, I loved to read. I still love to read, but I've gotten around to actually writing books instead of reading them for a little while. Anyways, um, you know, books were not as common as they are now. They weren't as prevalent or mass produced or something like that. Anyways, we would have a book fair at school. You'd pick out what you want, you'd order it, and then it would be shipped and lo and behold, there I was in the attic, kind of scrounging around, and I saw some books I wanted. My mother told me they were for other children. Oh, the betrayal. Oh, the anger that welled up in my little body. And of course, that book came from Santa, but somehow the entire gift-giving experience was somehow flavored by me discovering these, right? Right. And, you know, some of this journey can be like that, where you're going along and something gets sour for you. But I will say this, your dream still comes true. I still got those books. They were Dr. Seuss books. Loved them. Still love them. And, you know, some of them really have good messages in them. Some of the other things that you may see as you look around you, and you see a lot of frenetic activity. Yeah, there's a lot of busy support people. There are people supporting other people during this time so that those people can take time off. It's people at the stores. It's the delivery di drivers. It's the postal workers. It's the airline and airport workers. It's the travel people. It's the catering people. It's the food supply chain. A lot, a lot, a lot, so other people can indulge. Now, I'm not saying don't, you know, purchase things, don't get things. That actually supports those people. Some of those people truly need it. They cannot afford to get rid of their jobs. What about some of the other things? The calling which you received, okay? There is something about this time of year that, you know, it's a natural ending and it's a promise and a hope of a new beginning. Every year, especially being raised Christian, we're given this, you know, message about a baby being born, a baby that's hopeful. Even the end of the year, you have the old man retiring or dying out and the new baby of the new year being born. So what is going to be born in you? What is trying to be born? What is trying to be created? What is trying to be just let loose and set free? Okay, I'm here to help you with that stuff. And it's not often that I wear red, but when I do, it means passion. Someone made this for me years ago, and she's gone now. She's gone because despite the thing that made her sick with cancer, she couldn't really bring herself to put chemo into her body. There's something about the thought of foreign things in our bodies that really inhibits people. Now, as a person who works as a healer, I've seen many, many things that people have had to get rid of out of their bodies, out of their subtle bodies, when your subtle body wants to heal. I keep this because it's beautiful, and it's handmade, and it was made with love. And again, 
I'm going to say it. You have to live a life worthy of the calling you received. Be classy, be elegant, be yourself, be swift, be brave, be true, be reverent, be kind, be patient. Understand that elderly people are really scared right now. Understand that a lot of people are living in fear. Understand that a lot of people around you, as I'm seeing around me, I have this expression like they're dropping like flies. I'm seeing people going through their ascension symptoms and they don't want to believe it. And they don't really want to hear it. And it's keeping them a little bit in a state of fear. Okay? Cut those people in your life some slack. Do not cut them out. Cut them some slack. Give them some space. Let them breathe. Help them in other ways, especially if you are strong. I know now the reason why I was pushed so hard through parts of mine is so that I would be there on the other side to be strong for you, to be strong for people, to be strong for my family. Now, Santa came early for us. I got a really piece of really good big news about restructure. And my son got accepted to his dream. And it was like a 4% chance. We are beyond grateful. We're still pinching ourselves. We are astounded. We're speechless. And yet it's here and it's for real. Just like for you, some of that stuff that Santa's going to bring, even if you've had a little bit of sour patch on your journey, those dreams aren't stopping. So I say to you, be in the spirit of the season. Try to be generous. Be generous of spirit. Don't give in to the negativity. Don't look at it. Don't get snarky with people. I'm going to say this as a warning for some people. Don't pick up the alcohol because you know in some of your families, you just add alcohol and it's on. Okay, don't go there. And Merry Christmas. I am still here to help you, but I just want to say Merry Christmas to you. Have a wonderful season of joy. Bye.